This is the first lesson in this series of tutorials on using PDO with a MySQL database, and in this lesson we will learn how to do a PDO connection. I've already got XAMP up and running so that I can use PHP on my local machine, and I've provided an SQL file called testdb.sql, available to download from the lesson text at webinaction.co.uk, which you can import into phpMyAdmin. If you're doing this course on Web in Action, then it's there in the lesson text. If you're doing it on YouTube, then there's a link below the video. Download the zip file, extract it, and then in phpMyAdmin click on Import. Import this file, and the database TestDB will be created. This consists of one table called Names, and in the table we have four columns, an auto-incrementing ID, and then first name, last name, and postcode. In your htdocs folder in your XAMPP installation, create a new text file and name it connect.php, and start out with opening and closing PHP tags. So we start out by creating a new instance of the PDO class and assigning this to the object $db. $db equals new PDO. PDO takes a maximum of four parameters in the parentheses, of which only three are obligatory. Each of our three parameters will be enclosed in single quotes and separated by commas. For the first of these three required parameters, we need to specify the data source name, or DSN. For a MySQL database, this starts out with MySQL colon. This is followed by host equals, and the name of the host where the database is, which is localhost. And semicolon. then db name equals and the name of the database which is test db and semicolon again then very important the character set of the database we can see in the sql file that the default character set is utf8 which is what we should be using for everything so we set that here in the connection script using char set equals utf8 that's the end of that first parameter. The next two parameters are the username and the password. Because this database is on our local machine, we can safely connect to it using root as the username and no password, just empty single quotes with no space inside. At the stage of putting the project online, we would have to create a more secure username and a password and use those instead. But for the moment, this is fine. That's the connection done. Now we can check that this connection works by doing a var dump of $db. Save connect.php, load it up in your browser, and you should get this cryptic message which indicates a successful connection to the database. If that's too cryptic to be convincing of our success, make a change to the PDO parameters to deliberately introduce an error. Change the name of the database so that it's wrong. And now we'll get an error message, unknown database, and it actually gives the name of the database that we've tried to connect to. Change that back, and then introduce errors in any other part of the connection script, and you'll get a fatal error, and each time it'll show you, it'll give you an indication of what's wrong. I changed localhost to the nonsense local hosting, and it says no such host is known. change the hostname back to localhost, and change the username this time to something which we haven't got on the system. This time I'll get the message that access has been denied, because obviously the username's wrong now. As a final test, put the username back to root, change the password to something which doesn't exist, and now we get a similar error message, again it says access denied, and it says using password yes. So we made a successful connection, and then we messed it up by introducing errors, and we found that when we did this, we got an ugly and also very informative error message echoed out to the browser. This is useful in development, because we want to know what's gone wrong, but it's not what we want our end users to see. 
is not just ugly, it also gives away information about our system, which we'd rather people didn't know. In the next lesson we'll use try, catch, to prevent this uncontrolled error message being returned, and instead we'll cause the program to fail gracefully without giving away any information about how our system works.